Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Thank you for choosing to come and worship with us this morning. You are appreciated and you matter to us. Thank you. I want to open today with a prayer. Good and gracious God, we come today to worship you, to lift up our prayers, to lift up our songs of praise, but also to lift up those burdens so that everything that is heavy upon our hearts we may lighten today, that our hunger may be fed with your forgiving meal. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to please stand and join me in a brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Please take a moment of silent reflection. Eternal God, our creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your faith, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have the peace of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that is given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us, and while we were still sinners for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take this time to share the peace with one another.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom, that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury or pardon love, and where there's sadness channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring home. Where there is darkness of light, and where there's sadness ever joy. Master, grant that I 
so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my A reading from 1 Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, you've shown great and steadfast love for your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I'm only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern your great people? Now it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I do now according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word is open, it gives life, it gives understanding to the soul. I 
open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Order my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Let your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. A reading from Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that m someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, and when it grows, when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls 
On finding one poor pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into the baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. Then he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I am not seeing any kids here today, so we'll do the children's sermon as our child selves. One moment. (laughs) So I'm going to need a volunteer. If I can untangle my phone here. Anybody ever play with one of these when they were a kid? Yeah? I need someone to be a telephone. All right. So our scripture today says that the Spirit intercedes uh, for us with sighs so deep and unheard. And so I want to kind of show, so when you do one of these, telephones, one person speaks into it, and the other should be able to hear. Want to go? And I did. Hello, 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 hello. There we go. (laughs) You have to have the string tight, because the idea is that the vibrations ride the string, and then um, you hear the sound wave uh, through the string. And the Holy Spirit is like this string. And so our prayers, we know, are lifted up to God, and God hears, because God promises to hear our prayers, even when we don't know what to say. Those vibrations are sent to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, one thing I've noticed as I've been working with transitional ministry and helping through changes and transitions is um, it reminds me of Lent. It does. Lent is a season of change in the church year. It's 40 days where we uh, intentionally focus in on God. We should every day, but in those 40 days of Lent, there is a practice about it. It's a holy time, and it begins with sobering words, words of an ending on Ash Wednesday. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Lent continues for five weeks of preparation, of reflection, of repentance and service and self-denial, intentional refocusing. And then you have Holy Week with the events of Palm Sunday and the Lord's Supper of Forgiveness and Jesus' crucifixion on Good Friday, and it all culminates with a joyful celebration of resurrection. Lent comes from an old English word, which is lengthen, and it means to lengthen, to lengthen. Lent is a church season of transition, in a time of transition. It is in a time when our weather is changing, and it's going from colder to warmer. 
Uh, light is changing. Our days are getting longer. Seasons change from spring to, from winter to spring. So we have this transitional time. And transitional times tend to be really loud because they're full of unknowns. And that makes us feel anxious. And when we feel these fears, this anxiousness, we, we get tense, right? Our bodies get tense, our minds get tense because we don't know what's ahead for certain. And that's common in any transition or change in your lives. And what it can cause is something called the fear, tension, pain cycle. And it basically works like this. You uh, have some fear, some anxiousness, and it makes you feel tense physically. Uh, your neck tightens. Maybe you get a backache. Maybe your head hurts. You start getting headaches. Maybe it's more emotional and mental. Maybe you begin spiraling into a depression. And then, so, that, so you have a pain, right? Then you have a pain. And then, because of that, you get more anxious. So then you feel more tense, and then you feel more pain, and so the fear, pain, tension, pain cycle, that's what it is. Blogger Sarah Bessie writes about this in her blog, and she invites us to lean into the pain when experiencing the fear, tension, pain cycle, that actually that is how you kind of resolve it. She writes, Stay there in the questions, in the doubts, in the wonderings, in the loneliness, the tension of living in at the now and not yet of the kingdom of God. Your wounds and hurts and aches until you are satisfied that Abba is there too. You will not find your answers by ignoring the cry of your heart or by living a life of intellectual and spiritual dishonesty. Your fear will try to hold you back. Your tension will increase. The pain will become intense, and it will be tempting to keep clinging tight to the old way of life. The cycle is true. So be gentle with yourself. Be gentle when you first release. Talk to people you trust. Pray. Lean into the pain. Stay there, and the release will come. Lean into the noise. Lean into the pain. The unknowns. The quiet, gentle leaning. When we lean into life's noise, we encounter the Spirit of God. Now, encountering the Spirit of God can lead to change and transformation and inspiration and passion and spirit-driven action, and all of that is terribly uncomfortable. It really is. One of those uncomfortable things when encountering the Spirit of God is silence, being still. Silence is foreign to our lives, just as spiritual indwelling may feel and seem. Often it takes reaching that point in which you have no words. You have no more actions. You can't think yourself, act yourself out of something. No more explanations. That we finally let the Spirit in. To let the Spirit speak for us. To shut off our minds and just listen. Lean into the spirit, lean into the silence, and you are leaning into the language of God. And someone who knew the language of God very, very well is a woman by the name of Mother Julian of Norwich. She was a mystic, and she leaned into this language of God and the changes and the challenges of dwelling in the spirit. It was in 1373, 1373, that she became gravely ill. 
and she had a series of intense visions. And she wrote and she reflected on these visions for 20 years. And then she published a book about them in 1395, becoming the first woman to ever publish a book in English. She wrote, and you may have heard this quote before, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of thing shall be well. Her struggle gave her the ability to see beyond pain and suffering, to see the compassionate face of God through it. This is what Julian wrote. She asked, Ah, good Lord, how could all things be well? Because of the great harm which has come through sin to your creatures. And so a good Lord answered all the questions and doubts that I could raise, saying most comfortingly, I make all things well, and I can make all things well, and I shall make all things well, and I will make all things well. And you will see for yourself that every kind of thing will be well. And in these words, God wishes us to be enclosed in rest and peace. Paul is speaking and referring to the same reliance on the Spirit, that all shall be well. In those heightened times, when we feel they absolutely are not well, and we have evidence all around us to prove it. This is what Paul is speaking into in chapter 8 of his letter to Romans. It's a text you may have recognized, at least the, se- the, the ending part, the second half of it, you could say. Uh, it's often spoken at funerals. I think some of you have, may have heard this at a funeral or two. It's beautiful words of assurance and hope and shock. Whenever I say that passage in a funeral, there comes this really uncomfortable moment where you have to read verse 36. And I invite you, go ahead and look in your Bible passages as we read along with this Romans 8, if you like. See, verse 36, you'll see it tucked in there. This is what it says. As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. Well, there is a reason that this text is snuck in there. It's not. It's very intentional. See, it's a quote from Scripture. Just like we may often quote Scripture from the New Testament, Paul is quoting Scripture from the only Scripture that would have been known at that time, what we call the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures. And so he's quoting from Psalm 44, which would have been a known psalm among his audience. They would have picked it up immediately. See, Psalm 44 is this powerful psalm, and it begins with praise for the greatness of God. Oh God, you are so great. Look at all the magnificent things you have done. You are so powerful. You are so mighty. And then it goes into a lament for the condition that the people find themselves in. God, you are so great. But we are being killed every day like sheep to the slaughter, and you do nothing. We have been faithful, and you have been asleep, O God. It literally says that. Wake up, God, it says, and do something. Rescue us because 
of our loyal love. So Paul inserts this quote from that song, psalm, song, because he wants to make his point so strongly. So when we say, but they are killing us, they are persecuting us, we are dying of hunger, Nothing will separate us from the love of God. But they're so powerful, and the world is full of so many unknowns. Nothing will separate us from the love of God. They're making our lives difficult. They can't make any decisions. Everybody's fighting everybody. Nothing will separate us from the love of God. But we live in a world of hatred. There's people who hate one person for another for exterior reasons. Why do we hate each other? Nothing will separate us from the love of God. Why are we being hurt? Nothing will separate us from the love of God. Paul's point is this. Even when assured by everything around you that God is not with you, God is with you. Lift up your pain to God. When you feel this fear, tension, pain cycle, especially in the unknowns of changes and transitions, which we all experience every day. Change is the one uh, unchangeable thing, right? There's always change. Lift that up to God. Lean into it and lift it up. Bring your complexities. Lift up your anger, your loudness, your fear, your tension, your pain. And even when you are certain no one's hearing you on the other end of that little telephone line that I just showed you, even when you're certain no one's listening and no one's there, and it's hopeless and amiss because all the evidence is pointing towards that, God is with you. God is with you. Nothing will separate us from the love of God. And if you do find yourself in a personal crossroads right now in your lives, longing to just get things done, get this pain and this fear, this unknown, get it over with, or Maybe you're frozen with apathy and you've just given up because it was too much. Well, there is a quote. If you can't get out of it, get into it. Go ahead and lean into that pain. Lean into the loudness. Lean into the silence. For the Holy Spirit is driving you forward. And here's a funny thing about the Holy Spirit. It only goes in one direction. (laughs) Forward. The Holy Spirit is driving you forward. Everything you are, you are because you made it through the past. So when you feel lost, nothing will separate us from the love of God. You are not lost. When you don't know where to go or what to do, God wants you to be still Lean into the silence and stay in one place because God is coming to you. Nothing will separate us from the love of God. God is a quiet God, but a strong and present God. God knows your pain and knows just what will heal you. So no matter how distant you may feel from God, No matter how much evidence surrounds you that there is no God present now, that God's asleep, God wants you to know that no matter how you feel, God wants so much for you to feel her love that he'd die for you. So lean into the pain with assurance that God is there with you. And I close with the words of Mother Julian, and may they rest in your heart. All shall be well, and all shall be well. 
and all manner of thing shall be well. For there is a force of love moving through the universe that holds us fast and will never let us go. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Amen. Generous, compassionate God, we gather before you to pray for the church, the world, and all in need. 
Shine the light of understanding on your church on earth. Bind us together in the word to share your love with the world. Lord, in your mercy. Protect birds and their nest, fields full of crops, the seas and the fish that swim in them. Inspire us to care for the creation that you love. Lord, in your mercy. Raise up just and wise advocates and judges from small town courts to international tribunals. Enlighten all leaders to discern what is right and do what is good. Lord, in your mercy. Nurture faith in those who doubt. Lift up those who are weak in body, mind, or spirit. Heal the sick, comfort the grieving, and surround any who might be facing their last days with love. We pray especially today for Carol and Tony Bickle, Scott Franson, Kathy Brooks, John Calhoun, Paul Thompson, Ron Fells, and June Donka. Lord, in your mercy. Expand the understanding of this assembly to see our neighbors as you see them. Let the yeast of your word grow beyond us to expand your, to expand your boundless love to those around us. Lord, in your mercy. Sustain us by the intercession of your Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit's sighs, too deep for words, comfort us until we rejoice with those already united with you. And we pray especially today for the comfort of the family and friends of June Horst. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we place all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in the mercy of Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated.
your first fruits give. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of the angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. O God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, call us to your table and grant us your life. When the world was formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and psalmists cried out for healing, and full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus our brother. He was born among the poor, he lived under oppression, he wept for the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he blessed it. He broke it and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. O God, you are breath. Send your spirit on this meal. O God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. O God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us one. O God, you are fire. Transform us with hope. O God, most majestic, O God, most motherly, O God, our strength and our song, you show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father and the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, the life in you now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The meal is prepared, and all who believe in this meal of forgiveness are welcome to partake in it. The ushers will let you know when to come forward. You may kneel or stand along the railing. You'll receive the bread, and then you may dip it. We are communing by intinction today. You may dip it in either the red liquid, which is wine, or the uh, light liquid, which is grape juice. There are gluten-free elements available. Just let the server know. 
Let us eat.
invite you to please stand and receive the communion blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you now and always in his grace. Amen. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice. May we thirst for your way of peace, for you are Lord forevermore. Amen. Most of the announcements of the week are found in your messenger insert, uh, so uh, please take those home, look through them, and uh, just one thing, a couple things coming up this coming week. Um, the Messiah Night for the Springfield Cardinals is Friday the 4th, and all our tickets are sold out, but if you are still interested, talk to Rex today, and he's back there in the corner in the mint green shirt. Um, so let him know for any last chance tickets to Friday's games. And other things, we will be having a grief share group beginning August 14th, and this is a 13-week um, course. It's a support group. Um, if you're experiencing any sorts of grief in your lives, um, loss of lo loved ones or even other significant losses that you feel are truly impacting you and, and would like to talk about and receive support with, this is a wonderful um, opportunity to do that and that begins August 14th, and they'll be meeting in the choir room, which is over on this side. Other uh, announcements are all in your bulletin, so please, as I said, read through those. Please stand and receive the benediction. And now may the power of God strengthen you. May the love of Jesus Christ heal you, and may the wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide you, now and forever. Amen.
guided by the gospel, we welcome all to... need. Go in peace, serve the Lord.